I might have just discovered the children's versions of the back rooms on this amazing show called Creeped Out. When I think of the back rooms, I get this chill that runs down my spine. Coming from a huge horror fan, some of these back rooms I have seen are truly horrifying. So how does Creeped Out compare? Well, in season 2 episode 4, we get this episode called The Many Place, and it's very similar to some of the back rooms I have seen, just slightly watered down with an actual story attached. But don't get it twisted because after sitting down and really taking this episode in, I can confirm this episode is definitely terrifying in its own way. So let's dive into this episode. Also don't forget to leave a like on the video as it really helps small channels with the algorithm. But yeah, let's dive into this episode. This story is about three siblings, Nita, Jet, and Max, who were on a vacation in Australia. They were pretty much killing time by exploring this huge hotel they were staying at because they had been told on arrival that unfortunately they decided to take their trip during the rainy season in the Queenlands. Nita had also spotted a blonde boy in reception and they were smiling at one another. Yeah, teenagers are so awkward, man. It's pretty cringe. Now this is when the younger sister Max decides to get on one of the lifts and press all the buttons but before she gets to the bottom she is stopped by some creepy buller man he tells her that bad things happen to kids who push all the buttons okay so we're just grabbing people's children's on the elevators now uh this guy's kind of out of bounds but at the same time he did just save this young girl unfortunately she would still end up meeting the same fate later that day though you see they were heading to the pool so nita and this guy can do some more awkward staring at each other, I guess. You put it back upside down. It's hanging rock. But while inside the lift, Max decides to push all the buttons, and this will begin their horrifying backroom experience. <laughs> You see, doing this sent them into a different reality. They discovered this while searching for the steps, but there doesn't appear to be any. No stairs. This gets even more terrifying when they try to go back to the lift, but it seems to have disappeared. They then notice the rooms have no numbers or anything on them for that matter. They didn't even have locks on them. This was pretty weird. And when they do try the doors, each one leads to an identical corridor. So it's like they were in a big maze or something. Nita, I'm scared. And at this point, Max was starting to freak out. I honestly don't blame her. This is pretty f***ing weird. Another thing is that they have pretty much already made things worse on themselves. The more doors you open, the harder it gets to retrace your steps. And judging by the amount of doors they have already opened, they're pretty lost in the sauce already. Oh, did I also mention they were hearing these horrific sounds? Whatever this creature was, it sounds pretty huge. Maybe it's a quicken like that creepy boiler guy said earlier. The Queen King will come for you. This definitely gives me back room vibes. Imagine this, you're trapped in some alternate universe with your younger siblings being chased by some creepy unknown specimen. Let that sink in. This episode continues to get more interesting and dark because while running from this creature, Max gets separated from her siblings. The door she goes in closes and the others have no way of knowing which door she went in. This is when we're met with this terrifying scene of Max desperately searching for her siblings. And on the other hand, while Nita and Jet were searching for Max, they hear this weird music. It kinda sounds like lift music. They do some more exploring and discover this lift. Awesome! Right? You will be wrong, my good sir. The most terrifying thing about this episode is that this lift didn't take them back home per se. Well, it did, just not their home. Notice how they zoom in on the picture after they exit the lift. Notice anything? Well, if you guessed that this picture looked a bit different, you would indeed be right. So why does this matter? Well, Nita and Jet had unknowingly took this lift to yet another different reality. They walk into what they thought was their room, but it appears this wasn't the case, as this couple stated they had been staying in this room for about a week now. 
Whoa. They head down to the lobby to discover that their parents' names weren't even on the guest list. The lady had even told them she didn't remember them checking in. Keep in mind, they still haven't realized that they're in a different reality. And as we can see, this guy right here seems to know what's going on. But wait, wouldn't this boiler guy be a different guy in every new reality? This is a bit confusing, but maybe they're all connected in some way. Also, things weren't looking too good for Max, as she was still trapped in that particular dimension by herself. So yeah, Nita and Jack get on the internet to find her supposed mom's number on some sketchy website, and when they call, they get a dose of reality. She had informed them that they had the wrong number, as she had stated she didn't have any kids. That creepy boiler man then comes up from behind, and informs them that they have found what is called the mini place. You see, that place wasn't some sort of maze. This was a alternate reality that leads to different alternate realities, meaning every single door they went in, they were unknowingly entering in a different reality. This is freaking horrifying, especially considering the many doors they went through. Only one of these realities were theirs. Holy fuck. Nope, I would just break down right then and there. There's no way, man. The odds of them finding their reality is about the same odds of me going vegan. Yep. Pack it up, looks like they're lost forever. Also, I find it pretty amusing that the current one they're in has flying cars, yet this guy is still sweeping the floors. Where are the freaking robots? How do you have flying cars but not freaking robots? Yeah, get me out of this place. But wait, this guy stops the lift just to shit on them some more by informing them of the many monsters that lurk in some of these realities, like he hasn't scared them enough. This one houses a terrible creature. They enter back into the realms of the unknown, and even though they had a super slim chance of finding their sister and their original home, they pretty much had no choice but to keep trying. I mean, wouldn't you? And might I mention that on their journey to find their original reality, they come across some really messed up ones in the process. <laughs> This one, for example, kept mind f***ing me because at times it looks like a green screen, but then they just go and react with the background and I'm like, oh, I guess it's real. Now, after freaking out a bit, they decide to find their sister first before they start on the path of finding their home. And I'm not gonna lie, this part was kinda cheesy. As you can see, Jed is just opening doors and barely yelling his sister's name as if she's just standing a few feet around the corner. Like, come on, bruh. She's somewhere deep in one of those realities. Now, Nita keeping track of where they were going was brilliant. But I mean, let's be honest here. In reality, this wouldn't matter as you would have already been too lost in the sauce and you would never get back home. But of course, we got to remember this is still considered a kid's show. And the plot does throw you for a loop at the end. I won't lie. So they encounter their sister again, who was accompanied by a quicken. Apparently, he was a friendly monster and was going to help them find a way home. The only catch is that you couldn't open your eyes around him, because by natural instinct, he was a eye-eating monster. Yeah, you heard that right. My guy has a fetish for the eyes. Bruh. So he'll pretty much gouge out your eyes and eat them on first sight of you opening them. But in reality, the budget was probably low, so they couldn't incorporate a real scary monster. Let's be honest here. It was probably some guy in a cringe Bigfoot suit or something. Bruh. And it seems I might have been correct, because when Max opens her eyes, we get a small glimpse of this monster. <laughs> And let's just say Party City must have ran a sale or something because who are you fooling with this? <laughs> Man. Now I know it seems like I'm ripping on the ending a lot, but I really did enjoy this episode. Up until the ending <laughs> but yeah they actually end up making it back to their original reality in the end but it seems their problems weren't over just yet it appears they had traveled back with a different version of their sister this girl stated that the reason she knew to keep her eyes closed was because of the old blind buller man that was there when they first came in but why would he tell you this before you get lost and did she say he was blind hold on that man clearly wasn't blind her shoes were also a different color and by this point it was obvious something fishy was going on yeah it turns out their real sister had already been led back to their original reality and this was the girl who told their real sister to keep her eyes shut while in the presence of the quicken 
Can we keep her, Daddy? Can we keep her? Man, this ending was just all over the f place. Oh my God, dude. <laughs> and just look at their parents. They're just sitting there like, uh, what the f is going on? So what did you guys think about this episode? The whole monster aspect of it wasn't the best in my opinion, but I did love the way they portrayed the kids being lost in different realities. That aspect of the episode still remains creepy as hell. So yeah, thanks for checking out today's video, everyone. And if you would like some more creeped out deep dives, check out this video right here. But until next time, Peace.